this is special and, I, and I'm very grateful. Um, there's a lot of angles I could take to talk into a room like this and I feel like the best um, version of me is the realest version of me. Um, I have embraced from an early age uh, kind of my story. Um, unlike most of y'all, or maybe all of y'all, I grew up sucking at everything. No, I'm, I'm, I'm being 100% literal. Um, I learned early on that my personality um, could get me kind of where I needed to go, but I also learned early on what I was not great at, and that was just about everything. Um, to kind of start with the real estate story, some people may know this, may not, but in order to practice real estate anywhere, you have to pass a test. I took the test more than anyone in the history of Texas. And so the first record I broke literally was the one that was like my scarlet letter. I took it 22 times. Uh, and if y'all don't, does anyone in here have their real estate license or ever had it? Keep it raised if you took the test more than 22 times, right? <laughs> um, and, and so that's just kind of my story that I learned early on is that resiliency coupled with um, just being very aware of yourself could lead to some really, really successful stuff that I have leveraged into the oldest sales job in the history of the world, real estate. Uh, if y'all have ever read the Bible, literally the first job in the history of the world selling anything was real estate. And so I embraced it at an early age and I'm gonna kind of um, ping pong back and forth with a little bit about what I've been able to do. And obviously this is not a time to be super humble, so forgive me for, uh, for sharing, but I wanna lead with saying that my coolest achievement ever is this lady in the teal, this is my wife. And um, kind of part of my story of figuring it out led me to her. And so long story short, uh, uh, playing off the 22 times where I finally passed it and you know, here, here we are. I grew up in South Texas and um, never really understood people bullying each other, never understood how people couldn't just all get along. And at an early age, I just tried to be friends with everybody. Uh, that came with a lot of letdown, came with a lot of calloused heart, came with a lot of uh, lonely Saturdays, whether I didn't get invited to a birthday party. And I was telling my friends, the Miltons, uh, earlier that I tried out for the basketball team from fifth grade until senior year of high school, and I got cut every single year. Every single year, literally, to where it just became normal to me. Uh, in high school, I was the guy that was so excited to go to prom and homecoming to where I literally just asked just about everybody, and the law of averages led me to finally finding a date. And when you grow up like that, you kind of get used to that being your normal. And so before I got into real estate, I had to go to college. Which, um, fun story, when I turned 16, I had the option to get a car or a Nintendo 64. I went Nintendo 64, so y'all can obviously uh, assume kind of my maturity level and, and my priorities. But I learned, I knew early on, I was like, okay, I'm not a good student. And um, another record I probably still hold is I got into SME with the lowest SAT score ever for a non-athlete. And that's because um, I learned when I was a freshman in high school that they had a thing called an admissions director. Y'all know what the admissions director is? It's the gatekeeper. And I wanted to make friends with the admissions director because I know that eventually guilt would overcome logic. And so I got an S <laughs> And in college, I decided to redefine myself. I decided to go and embrace things that I always wanted to be, and I was a leader. And I found that the best way to lead is to serve. And that's why this is a really special opportunity for me. And as you get older, I'm 41, which um, is not young, but it's not old. But I learned early on that the best way to learn is to teach. And that's what this is all about to me, is you're, you're, you have an opportunity to be part of the yes thing with the JA, right? It's yes. And I think people need to hear that at an early age because eventually what happens is some people that work for me, their biggest fear is someone saying yes. So at college, um, I got hyper involved. I literally joined every single club I could be a part of. Literally, I lost weight. I realized that, if, have y'all been to Kubi's before in Snyder Plaza? Kubi sells this apple strudel that literally I ate every single morning. I ate an entire serving. And I, like, I played football because at Highland Park they don't make cuts, but I never got in. But I ate this apple strudel. And I learned in college, like, you, if you want to talk to the cute girls, you probably need to give up strudel. And then I also fell in love with a thing called beer. And so it kind of just uh, met at this intersection. But in college, I redefined myself. I wanted to go and still bring heart to leadership, still bring love to people, still bring respect. But I wanted to learn how to work. I want to learn how to grind. And I think from an entrepreneurial perspective, that's the one thing you can't teach somebody is getting out of bed and working your freaking face off. So I went, joined a fraternity. My only experience uh, prior to that was literally watching Animal House or watching a movie. And I went through pledgeship and it was the worst experience of my life, truly, where I woke up every day like I might get killed today. 
but I fought through it. And that was my first uh, version of actually like finishing something. So I did that, joined the fraternity and uh, started getting involved with all these titles, right? And fun fact, raise your hand if you're a millennial, um, please. Statistics show that millennials would rather have a title than a race, right? Blows my mind. Would rather have a title than a raise. And you couple that with social media. I was the first real estate person in the world to do social media. Statistically, people would rather have more likes than more money. All right, here's your chance to change that. Um, so anyway, got involved in the fraternity and sororities, uh, had friends that played football, all the clubs, RUF, all these different things. And then it came time for people to find a place to live. And I was the guy that was just connected. And I was kind, I was funny, I was social chair, rush chair, all these things to where like, well, Rogers Healy is kind of cool. And I'm like, well, <laughs> Nintendo 64. And so, um, long story short, got involved. And then uh, never was motivated by money, right? Making money is a lot of fun, right? And we have a couple bankers here that would love to go and help you make more money, I'm sure. It's a lot of fun, right? But it can't drive you, it can't be your reason, it can't be your why. And I'm gonna ask a question at the end that's gonna come back to that. Um, are you impressed so far? That I'm actually pulling, yeah, so I was like, on the way here, I was like, what should I talk about? Um, so anyway, I started paying attention differently, right? And in a school like SMU, if y'all went there, a majority of the kids are from out of state. Some, t some people are out of, uh, out of the country, but back in the late 90s, which I'm dating myself, most people lived in either Deep Ellum or the M Streets, right? And they rented an apartment. And so very ignorantly, um, I went and helped people find places to live just to be nice. And then it came time for me to move out of the fraternity house, which at that time was a very dark day. And so I went around being responsible and I called off yard signs. How much is this? Can we afford it? I have five roommates. I had a dog at the time. Um, worst dog ever, best dog name ever. What was his name, Rogers? Tarzan. Uh, I had to give Tarzan away because he was a Jack Russell Terrier, which those dogs should be banned. Uh, anyway, so I finally found a place to live. We moved in 7268 Joyce Way uh, back in 2001. And I ignorantly asked the person whose name was on the sign, how much did you make? And he told me. And I was like, I'm getting my real estate license, right? And so I leveraged all these different things. 22 uh, times later, I had to get a job waiting tables to pass the test. Made a bunch of money in college. I was making six figures as a junior in college doing apartment leasing. I was making over $200,000, which is real money for all you people watching, that's real money. So what I did is I saved it up and I did what every logical 21 year old does, is I pursued my dream. What was your dream, Roger? <laughs> right? I moved to LA to become an actor. <laughs> and so um, another question, raise your hand if you've seen my movies. Nobody, uh, one person seen it. Um, I moved to LA, uh, and again, ignorant, naive, trusted everybody, I sent a mass email, Mr. Rogers is moving to LA, who can you connect me with, right? Just very blatant, asking for help, which I think the world needs, just raw vulnerability, right? And I think the most powerful words you can say to somebody other than I love you is I need your help, and the right people are gonna respond. So I went out there, literally packed up um, my Hunter Green Escalade, and one of my first life lessons was my dad, who a few of you know in this room, was like, you're gonna pack your U-Haul. I was like, no problem. I didn't realize you had to distribute the weight evenly. And so I packed the U-Haul, we literally are on 30 passing uh, Grand Prairie and a tire explodes. And my dad's like, Rogers? I'm like, son of a gun. It's like every sign not to move there. Still went out there, started networking, right? Went out there, and if you've ever had a friend that's in the, um, entertainment industry, which I kind of was, uh, it's different, it's a grind, but there are so many parallels to what I do now. There's 70,000 people that do what I do in this city. 70,000, I'm number one, right, for a reason. So long story short, not necessarily on paper, but my mom says I'm number one. <laughs> so I move out there, I network, I meet people, and I see how the game is played. And my eyes were open differently, right? I went to college, like, oh my gosh, this is what, alcohol tastes like and this is what pledge ship is like this is what failing a college class is like and i majored in advertising because i couldn't pass statistics right you get used to it so i moved to la network around literally the day that i move in my one of my favorite uh, restaurants is boston market if you've ever been there fantastic restaurant uh, my other re favorite restaurant is central market so maybe we get a sponsorship out of this so long story short the day i moved there my dad and i go to uh, boston market because it tasted like home even though we're from Dallas and it's Boston Market. But y'all know that cornbread and the macaroni just feel safe. See, we got some Boston Market fans in here. 
Um, they also have great apple pie, and we should go there tonight, all of us. They probably need our business. <laughs> anyway, we go there, walk in, and the person at the counter that was literally scooping the green bean souffle was talking about how she needed to sell her script. I was like, what? And then the person that helped move my credenza upstairs was talking about how it's pilot season. I was like, what? Everybody here is doing the same, trying to do the same thing I'm trying to do. So I got to Google, right? Just like when you sneeze, you're like, why am I sneezing? Oh my God, my toes are falling off. I got on Google and I found out that 333 people a day back in 2002 were moving to LA to become an actor. Odds were stacked against me. I was like, let's go, let's fight. Let's figure it out. Networking with intention changed my entire perspective my entire life. So I did all this, made great friends, and I was, uh, I was out there back when reality TV became like a real thing. Right, reality TV at the early stages for like an actor was the enemy, right? I was like, well, let's make friends with the enemy because I just wanted to get on TV, I didn't care. Um, so I was on a show uh, called Newlyweds um, with Jessica Simpson and her first husband and then I was on her sister's show called The Ashley Simpson Show, right? Raise your hand, nobody, right? <laughs> My first word on television was bleeped out and I had a ponytail and I, if you're on TV, um, one of the perks, no matter what time of day is, it's free alcohol. So just imagine, um, that's another story we'll follow up with. Long story short, I network my face off and I start meeting these people that just feel like home. Boston market for people, right? People from Mississippi, people from Texas, people from Florida that just came together. Um, and then I did what I did with everything else. I quit, I quit. It's like, ah, I've been here 11 months, you know, I miss being home. And if you've ever been to LA, like no part of LA feels safe. Not literally like, like in every definition, every definition of the word. I called my parents. I was like, hey, I have four months left on my lease. They're like, come on home, right? But what I forgot is that I networked with these people that like me for me, right? Literally the month I get home, my roommate becomes a top. You guys remember Ryan Cabrera? He's my roommate. He, he, I move home. He literally has a, a number one song on the radio. Ashley Simpson has a number one show on MTV. My other neighbor was a singer named Maya who had the number one song with that Lady Marmalade, you know, Boule, Bouquet. I was like, <laughs> I was like, holy crap, I missed my calling. So I'd already done real estate. Very long story short, I go to the gym at two o'clock in the afternoon because that's what you do when you're a realtor when you don't have anything to do. It's like, I'm gonna go work out and just shoot baskets. And this guy came up to me. He's like, have you ever considered acting? I was like, oh. <laughs> right? This goes to the New Orleans story. I was like, well, actually I am an actor and I just moved back to be closer to my family. I'm broke. Right? It's like, so um, we're filming a movie in New Orleans called Glory Road, and we would love for you to audition for the part of Pat Riley. And I was like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. So long story short, um, I was cast in this movie where my coach was a guy named John Voigt. Uh, John Voigt, if you don't know who he is, is a very seasoned actor, Academy Award winner, also father of Angelina Jolie. So I go there with the mindset of being a realtor. Uh, and a connector. Also knowing by this time, reality set in where I was probably not gonna go win an Academy Award um, for being a glorified extra. Uh, but if you watch the movie, which you all should, because it's fantastic, it's Remember the Titans for Basketball. Um, but I spent four weeks with John Boyd talking to him about the world of real estate. Uh, he was a thing called a character actor. If you don't know what that is, um, Daniel Day-Lewis, uh, Dustin Hoffman, John Boyd, very, uh, uh, they're character actors, which means they're in their character the entire shoot which is the most bizarre thing ever. He played a guy named Adolph Rupp, who was a not friendly basketball coach. But anyway, I leveraged my time, came back and uh, hit real estate uh, hard, hit the ground running. And my background with creative thinking and with being kind of um, kind of an unintentional loner is I just have like, have you seen Mad Men, that show? I'm, I'm like three episodes in, but I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. It's just simple. And they went and revolutionized marketing. That's how my head is always a uh, process. So long story short, come back from New Orleans, uh, the week before Katrina is when we came back. And uh, at the same time, the Mavs were making their first run, uh, Urban Outfitters, if y'all remember that show, uh, I'm gonna start, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, uh, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why I'm telling you this, is Urban Outfitters had a show that's, a, a t-shirt says, Dirk is my homeboy. Y'all remember this? Y'all probably literally might not have been born. And then they also played out the fact that Urban Outfitters had one that says, Jesus is my homeboy, which was mocking Christianity, right? And as a believer, as a Christian, your number one job is to bring people to Christ. And I was like, how ironic, this shirt making fun of it is literally going and bringing people you know, off the streets. I was like, screw it. Rogers Healy is my realtor. I made a t-shirt. And back to the LA people, I went and mailed it to these people on a shirt fabric from American Apparel. 
and it was this cheesy t-shirt making fun of me, which again, a, I'm, no one's better at making fun of me than me. So I did it. Uh, two weeks later, my mom called. She's like, Rogers, go get People Magazine. I'm like, what? Go get, I was like, what? You're in Style Watch. I was like, what? Y'all remember the week that Britney Spears was losing her, her mind and unfortunately was like trailed off and shaved her head? She wore my t-shirt the entire week. Literally. <laughs> and I've never met Britney Spears. <laughs> and so I'm over here like putting the pieces together. I'm like, what in the world am I missing? At the same time, a uh, little side story, I, when I moved back, I was roommates with Tony Romo. And so I'm living in this world where I'm just like freaking Joe Namath Jr. This is fantastic. I'm in Style Watch. I set up an e-commerce shop where I was selling these t-shirts to people in Ireland, cat shirts, everything. I was like, I'm going to retire at 23. This is fantastic. Long story short, um, that came and went. So I went viral before going viral was a thing. And I learned early on like how hard it is to maintain that spark when it comes to marketing. So long story short, to play to the Tony Romo story, and if I need to cut this short, just tell me. Um, I had some caffeine a little bit ago, so <laughs> I'm blacking out. Um, in the world of sales, in the world of entrepreneurship, it's really easy to burn out. And it's really easy to make money your drug. And it's really easy in a city like Dallas to make dad, your status everything you go for. Everything. And if any of y'all are in the world of sales, the first thing you realize you sell is yourself. And when you realize you go to a room like this, it's so hard not to look around and be like, oh my, high, 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 power, you know, business cards, whatever. And it burns you out. And it sucks, right? And I was working at a company that's still around that was very well established, but I never felt home, off the market, right? I never felt that until I started making money for the company, which never made sense to me. That's not how you're supposed to lead. That's not how you're supposed to love people. So I had a breakdown. If y'all remember uh, the Cowboys back in the early 2000s, uh, Tony's first big shot to fame was their playoff run against the Seahawks. And if you remember, Tony went and fumbled the snap, right? And the Cowboys lost. To, uh, they lost last second. They didn't go to the next round of the playoffs. He calls me. He's like, I'm having a bad day. I was like, yes, same. He's like, I just lost the playoffs. And I was like, well, I just lost a prospect in an open house. So same. <laughs> uh, and he says, I've never been skiing before. Let's go to Beaver Creek. I'm like, okay, I've never been on a private plane before. How much is gas? So I didn't pay for gas. So long story short, um, we fly to Beaver Creek and we're on a ski lift. And if y'all, I hate heights, I hate ski lifts. Um, I love the mountains, but not necessarily where I would choose to go, but on one of the long lifts, right? I kind of broke down. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm 25 years old. I didn't want to really be a realtor, right? There's something really just not exciting about being a realtor, but I still like what it represents, right? And I don't really like who I'm surrounded by. So he literally says, start your own real estate company. I'm like, okay. So I come back and literally start a real estate company. And I did it without a business plan. I had about $700 in my bank account, which um, one of the financial literacy classes I should probably still take. Um, <laughs> and I started a real estate company. And my intention from day one is still the same 16 years later. I wanted to change the way real estate um, was brokered. Um, but more importantly, I wanted to change the way that leaders led. And I think that what people need in this world is inclusion. And they need respect. And they need to feel like they're just as important as everybody else. And I've stuck to that. And we've been able to go, there's a family here where uh, their son is working with us this summer, he's one of our associates. And it's just different. It's different, which ties me back to the uh, junior associate, uh, jun the JA program. I wish I would have done something like this when I started out, right? Because it keeps you humble, it keeps you kind, but it also keeps you connected. And with our company, we've been able to go and grow it where, again, um, all humility aside, we're a top 15 real estate brokerage in the country in the country, right? I'm a top 100 real estate agent in the country out of over 3 million. And it's all because I've stayed true to myself, right? And the irony of these kind of things is most people don't expect this version when they ask me to come speak, which is why they invite me to come speak, right? And as you start finding success with whatever you're doing, banking, entrepreneurship, whatever, just be yourself. And that's one thing I've proudly never wavered from, but this city will suck you in. It will suck you in and it will chew you up. And when you start making money, it's what you do with the money that defines who you are. You can change lives. So we've done that. And my success in real estate is all based off the Seinfeld principle. You guys watch Seinfeld? You know why it's a famous show? It's a show about what? Nothing. No one ever says, there's that Rogers guy. He's a thinker, right? It's like, I just do it. Worst case scenario, I fail. I've started a lot of companies that have completely bombed. 
I've invested in a couple, like Mizzen and Main, I was one of their first investors. This guy comes to me, he's like, hey, I have a shirt idea that is like this, I'm like, I'm in. Never invested in anything, <laughs> right? But, but through that, I've just learned, right? The saying is you bet on the, on the jockey, not the horse. And so that's kind of the mantra for what I do with, with work. And I've learned kind of the easy way, what's most important in life, which leads me to my next question. And I want you all to answer this at the same time, all right? You gotta promise me you answer this without giving any thought to it. Please, are you all in? Can you help me? Yep, ready. Come on, collective yes. Can you yes. do that? Yes. That wasn't the question, but the question is very simple. Ready? I'm gonna do three, two, one, and you're gonna answer. Ready? Yep. Yes. What's your superpower? Three, two, one, go. Come on. Come on. Come on, what is it? Everyone, say it out loud. Someone said gambling, not gambling. Be a good person. Right? I had a lady that lives down the street from me. Her name is Jan Miller. Jan Miller is a very prominent book agent, and she is, uh, has embraced her personality, she's embraced her quirks, and she has dominated. She took me to dinner two and a half years ago, and she changed my life. She did the same thing I just did to y'all, and I was there by myself with her husband and her, and she said, what's your superpower? And I said, without the blink of an eye, giving people confidence, period. And when you grow up without something, that's all you wanna do is give it to somebody. And so that, to me, is what this is about, but that's more importantly what entrepreneurship is about. It's about giving people something more than their job. It's about giving them a reason to go and show up, and it's about leading by example. And I think that is what I have learned over the course of a 21-year career, which is crazy, but it's not crazy, right? And it's not hard to go do what I've done, because all I've done is I've outworked anyone else in the room, not this room, but I've outworked them, right? And a degree gets you somewhere, but the best advice you can get is the first thing you sell is yourself, period. And that's what this city needs. It needs relationships. It needs a heartbeat. It needs a pulse and it needs soul. Um, so that's, that's my story. That's, that's my background. Um, through uh, creating conveniences, we've also had, we have a commercial uh, real estate company as well, where believe it or not, we're a top 15 real estate company in North Texas. We have a global relocation company, which helps high profile, high net worth people all over the world with real estate and moving, right? How do I leverage my LA connections? How do I leverage these pro athlete connections? And we also have a property management company. I've learned in the world of entrepreneurship to never go and put your eggs in one basket and to always be levered, right? If the real estate market crashes, not in Dallas, and we can talk real estate too, people need to still lease their place out. We can help them. If people need to move, we can help them move. And I have this sense of fear that we're gonna lose them. And I think that is how the easiest money is made, period, is giving someone time, time. So uh, I hope that you guys appreciate a little bit about um, my story. I'm happy to answer any questions, but um, yeah, my, my, my suggestion to y'all is find your superpower, leverage it, and always be yourself. Always, and realize that what you're doing in this room is needed. It's needed. We don't need another real estate company in DFW. We don't. We don't need another anything in DFW. We need more people empowering the people of tomorrow, as old man as that sounds. And I can promise you, when you go and do that, and you give somebody your time, you get the greatest gift, which are words I never would have used 10 years ago because I didn't have time. But if I would have been intentional and I would have told these stories early on, it would have made me happier, right? It would have made me like have a, have a bigger purpose. So uh, thank you all for letting me share. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions, and this was a lot of fun. So, the end. Thank you. <laughs>